Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Celia and Cassandra would like to introduce you to two failed scammers. Mel Johnson thought he'd try his luck with Celia. Clearly he was a newbie and so he had the free version of the script. Hi pretty, he said. I was thrilled by your profile picture and I must confess that you're so beautiful. How are you doing today? I'm very well thanks, said Celia. You're welcome. Where originally are you from? I was born in Alt Mangalinia and brought to Durham when I was six hours old. Where originally are you from? A man said to thumbs up. I assume that means you aren't going to tell me, she said. Where presently do you live? he asked. I'm not answering any more questions until you tell me where you were originally from. I live in Washington, D.C. and my hometown is Huston, Texas. I'm a dual citizen. Dual citizen of what? asked Celia. My mum is from Italy and my dad is from the States. Ah, oh, OK. And in reply to him asking her where she presently lives, she said in Durham, the one in England. I was bring and brought up in Italy until after my high school level we relocated to the States. OK, what have you been doing today? It's night over here. It's 9am over here, she said. 4.12am here. So what are your plans for today? I'll probably do some cleaning, go for a walk, maybe go to the supermarket. What are yours? Still midnight texting you lying down then go back to bed she said we can still talk okay i slept early so tell me more about yourself marital status i'm a widow said celia my husband died five years ago i'm really sorry what about your kids i have an adult son who lives in sydney in australia with his girlfriend i lost my wife and daughter in a fire disaster seven years ago i have a son named mac he's seventeen he's in the high school and he's doing great so tell me what's your religion i'm an eleventh day de adventist said celia a man got out his script my mum had baptized me in pentecostal church but she was good christian and my father just believed in god i'm a searcher for the truth between earth and heaven since i was young so i had to study very deeply all religions nowadays i say that all religions are good but we interpret it to every one like we want, and I believe in some superior power. You can call it God, universe, power of mind, anything you want. I believe that we are not alone. We are not the only planet that has life. Whatever all that means, replied Celia. I believe being ethic, which means to respect everyone in this earth, and that if you think wrong of someone, you are doing the wrong to yourself first. Never heard of that being described as religion, said Celia. What I mean, I'm a Christian. You could have just said that, she said, instead of all that meaningless babble. Really? Are you a God-fearing woman? Why should I be afraid of God? I am a God-fearing man, he said, breaking out another paragraph. I do have my Christian faith to credit for my life, attitude and success. However, I don't use the name of God to trap women, for my character speaks for itself. I am not the type of man who is focused entirely on himself. Ah, oh, Cecilia, change your mind. I don't think you're supposed to copy and paste both of those paragraphs. You're meant to choose the most appropriate one, but whatever. I can't get you. No, Cecilia, you probably can't. Why will I copy and paste at my age? I have no idea, she said. You tell me. At least try and use something I haven't seen a gazillion times before. I really want to know you better. That's why I'm asking you these questions. Well, try typing something for yourself then, Cecilia. So tell me, what are your hobbies? Underwater yogic chairlifting and international stitch counting. What are yours? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I enjoy cooking, swimming and reading, walking on the beach, fishing, camping, scrabbling, playing checkers and seeing good comedies. I love the outdoors, mountain biking, camping, fishing, horseback riding, outdoor photography and also spending some time out with my friends and also my son. Celia asked the question that we always ask. What's scrabbling? No one can ever answer. To scratch or scrape, he said. Is it correct? I have no idea, Cecilia. Why is scratching your hobby? Do you have nits or fleas? I don't have any, he said. Then why is scratching your hobby? What do you scratch or scrape? Scratch, Google helpfully informed him. Are around with one's fingers to find, collect or hold on to something. Yes, Cecilia. Why is it your hobby? What do you scratch around with your fingers to find, collect or hold on to? Because it makes you learner, he said. 
What on earth does that mean? What do you scratch around with your fingers to collect or hold on to? Typical error, he said. Scrabbling educate you. Typical of what, she said. What do you scratch around with your fingers to find, collect or hold on to? And in reply to him saying, scrabbling educate you, she said, educate you about what? Like spellings, he tried. How does scratching around with your fingers teach you spellings? Scrabbling is like scratching. Place you tiles. Place you tiles, said Celia. What on earth does that mean? What do you scratch around with your fingers to find, collect or hold on to? I mean the meaning of scrabble. Do you understand? Yes, said Celia, and you said your hobby is to scratch around with your fingers to find, collect or hold on to something. So what do you scratch around with your fingers to find, collect or hold on to? It's your hobby. You said it. Don't you even know what you scratch around with your fingers to collect or hold on to? This question is too much, said Ascama, who, as usual, had no idea what he was talking about. No, it's not, Cecilia. You said it was your hobby, so you should be able to tell me what it is. Or was that another of those copied and pasted paragraphs you were using earlier? I did tell you to type something for yourself. At least then you might understand what you're typing. But I told you about my hobbies. You said what is scrabbling is a game. So what was all that rubbish about scratch around with your fingers to find, collect or hold on to something, Cecilia? All this? where the first time she'd said what scrabbling he'd said to scratch or scrape. Now you've changed your mind and decided it's a game. Try to define scrabble game, he said. What's your favourite colour? Why do you have to scratch around with your fingers to find, collect or hold on to something to play scrabble? You aren't making sense. Green. My favourite colour is red. I adore red because it's a symbol of love and I love rose flowers. Why do you have to scratch around with your fingers to find, collect or hold on to something to play Scrabble? You aren't making sense. I'm beginning to think you have no idea what you're talking about. Why are you still deliberating on this issue, he said. And you lied about your list of hobbies. So tell me what your real hobbies are, not a copied and pasted list. Scrabbling is a game, he said. What do you really do for hobbies? And in reply to him saying again, scrabbling is a game. She said, why do you have to scratch around with your fingers to find, collect or hold on to something to play scrabble? She said it three times, to which our man replied, OK, how are ye? Now what on earth are you talking about? You really are an idiot, aren't you? You don't even know what your real hobbies are, do you? You thought you'd try and sound impressive and failed miserably. But that last message didn't send because our miserable failure had blocked Celia. Then along came Davis Philip to try his luck with Cassandra. Hi, he said. Hello. Nice to meet you, Cassandra, and thanks for accepting my friend request from you. My name is Davis Philip. I'm from the United States of America. I need a friend to share my feelings. Where are you from? I'm from England. Oh, ever being there, he said. Cassandra, I love your beautiful profile and your lovely smile. You should always keep that smile up. It can heal the soul. I don't know what that means, she said in reply to him saying, oh, ever being there. I mean, haven't been to England. Oh, OK. Yeah, can we talk and know each other better? We can try. OK, can I ask questions to know you better? So long as they're sensible ones, not childish, idiotic ones from a list of stupid questions to ask someone you've met online. OK, let's dive in to learn about your relationship statues. Are you married? And about kids? I have a statue of my grandfather in the hall. No, neither. Oh, sorry about your loss, he said, in reply to her saying she had a statue of her grandfather in the hall. You're not married at your age? Don't be ridiculous. He was my grandfather. He'd be about 130 if he was still alive. I was married and now I'm divorced with one lovely daughter. Another idiot, she said, who thinks a woman's place is in the home having his babies, in reply to him saying you're not married at your age. Well, I want you to tell me about yourself. Well, don't make childish remarks when I do. You wouldn't want me to say, you divorced at your age. I presume you cheated on her, would you? At least try and sound like a mature man, even if it is hard. No, I didn't cheat on her. She was the one who cheated on me, said that man.
OFGS, grow up and read what I said. What's with all these men I meet online who can't even read and comprehend a simple sentence? Are there no men with brains online? I can fill that in for you, Cassandra. No, not in your world. I guess not. They wouldn't need to be online, would they? Please don't include me saying all of that, OK? You don't know me. Then grow up, read what I said, and don't act like one of them. See, I'm single father of only daughter. She lived with my nanny back home. I've been single for three years, and I can tell you, I was married for 16 years, till I divorced three years ago, after I caught my wife several times cheating on me. I know shit happens, but I won't tolerate that. So you still haven't read and comprehended what I said. Do you have reading difficulties? Yes! I'm divorced at my age and I didn't cheat it on her. Is that what you want? OK, I'll assume you have reading and comprehension difficulties. No, she said in reply to him saying, is that what you want? I want you to read what I said. Read it properly. You wrote many words to me. I don't know the particular one you're talking about. OFGS, grow up, she said highlighting the bits where she'd said another idiot who thinks a woman's place is in the home having babies and she'd said well don't make childish remarks when i do you wouldn't want me to say you divorced at your age i presume you cheated on her would you does that help your struggling brain she added can i call you let talk if you must he tried calling you're just a time-wasting idiot aren't you she said goodbye how rude not to speak because actually I think she'd missed the call. And so he called again. Now what do you want? Are you going to do me the courtesy of speaking or not? Okay, you have a count of ten to say something. Otherwise you can go away and annoy someone else because you're obviously just a rude, time-wasting idiot. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Uh, I can't bother to resist. You're just a time-wasting idiot. Goodbye. What? He heard when the call ended. You really are just a time-wasting idiot. Goodbye. I'm not hearing you. Yes, you are. And I can't hear you. And I don't see you, he said. And I can't see you either. Surprise. Either talk or go away. You have a count of ten to decide. She got down to four. And he said, OK. She got down to two. And he said, can I call you again? Get on with it. I think the internet not good. If you don't speak this time, you can go away. This is your last chance. And I'm new here. I don't know this app much. OK, you have a count of five to call again. So he did. OK, this is your last chance to speak. OK, you're clearly not going to. OK, that's it. Goodbye. I'm not talking to you again. I won't talk to you again if you refuse to speak. Goodbye. Well, if you don't like my friendship, you can go away, he said. I assume that means, yes, I am a time-wasting idiot and I won't speak. Goodbye. Go and annoy someone else. I'm not focusing you to be my friend. I'm new here and I need friends to talk to. Well, you won't get many friends if you call people, act like an idiot and refuse to speak. I don't refuse to speak. I think the internet is not good. Good morning, Cassandra. Good morning. He sent a New Year gift. Cassandra, wishing you a happy New Year. So what is your New Year resolution? I don't believe in them. What's yours? Why don't you believe in them? I've never seen the point of them. What's yours? Well, I think if you don't believe them, that is, you don't believe in Jesus. I have no idea what the connection is. Please explain and tell me what your resolution is. Well, I believe in Jesus and I know he kept me alive. Is him I put my trust. What your resolution? Mine is Christian. OFGS, please tell me the connection with a New Year resolution. Don't you bother to read. Please tell me the connection between Jesus and making a resolution. And please don't make me ask again. Well, I should say New Year is a blessing to us as Christians, that God has kept us alive to see a new year, so we celebrate it with our loved ones. Keep trying. What's the connection between Jesus and a New Year resolution? And this is your last chance to give me a sensible answer, so choose wisely. I know how many of my friends and calls may to die and let their soul rest in peace he said very wisely what is the connection between jesus and a new year resolution i see you're not that good to talk to he said you sound so rude because she'd said it several times 
Okay, you're obviously an idiot. Goodbye. You have no idea what the connection is, do you? None at all. You never answered me, but I always answered your questions, and you're playing with me. Excuse me, I answered you straight away, and I've had to ask you over a dozen times and still not got an answer. It's you that's playing silly games, for the avoidance of doubt, and to give your slow brain time to read. This is what I said. And so she copied the bit where she'd said, I don't believe in them, what's yours? I'm still waiting for you to tell me the connection between Jesus and a New Year resolution, but it's obvious you have no idea what the connection is, so you have two choices. One, apologise for being an arrogant, rude idiot who doesn't read, or two, go away and annoy someone else. OK, you want to know my relocation, right? Well, my relocation, I'm going to eat more healthily, give up smoking, and then plain a good business for myself. Why do you need to relocate to eat more healthily? Well, I need to eat more healthily because my health is very important to me. I care about it. I want to live a healthy life. A healthy diet can help me stay active as I get older, giving me more time to spend with my loved ones and do the activities. So tell me, you told me you haven't married and didn't have any children. How did he possibly? How did who possibly what? Hey, I guess I ask you a question first, he said. That's none of your business, she said, because the question was, you haven't married and didn't have any children. How did he possibly? That's none of your business, and you still haven't apologised for being an arrogant, rude idiot who doesn't read. This is your last chance. I think you are the idiot fool here, he said, and disappeared. I hope you enjoyed this tale of two abject failures as scammers. If you did, please like it, please share it, please comment down below, please subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you again in another video.